Thank you so much. It was wonderful seeing this film again on the big Castro screen. So it sounded like we had a lot of members of the Russian community here in the audience. Okay. So um, what was it like hearing the reactions of the audience? I saw you in the balcony and people were laughing and there were some moments. What was that like? Um, it, yeah, it's, it's nice to see that the film is appreciated, um, especially, I mean, depending on, um, you know, you can tell who's reading the subtitles and who isn't reading the subtitles. Yeah. Right? So you can feel like something happens for the Russian speakers and then it registers half, you know, a for second later for, for, for the, the non, rest of for us. The rest of us. For the rest of us. So you... Hard to hear, we'll be closer. So um, you've been living with this story for quite a long time. I mean, you, you wrote the short story and then um, the film came later and I recently read the story and it was interesting to me that the whole story was there but then it seemed that there was meat put on the bones. So what was, that, what was the creative process like? Um, what can you do in a short story that you can't do in a film and vice versa? Um, well, the story, yeah, it was about 10 years from the writing of the story to the writing of the film and the making of the film. Um, you know, when I wrote the story originally, I hadn't thought about it as a film. I thought about it just as a story. Um, when I was writing those stories back in 2001, um, you know, the objective was to do something that really hadn't been done um, in literature, which is to write about the Russian Jewish community in North America. I say broadly in North America. I, I mean, I'm, I live in Toronto, but the community's not that different, whether it's Toronto or, or even San Francisco, where I have relatives in the Bay Area. Um, and then years later, I came back, and the story was still interesting to me, um, and I thought it was cinematic enough, and I wanted to see if, I could do on screen what I tried to do on the page. Because as far as I know, nothing like this has been done um, in North America where you, you know, see an authentic, realistic portrayal of that community. Um, and to do it, you know, 75, 80% in Russian with real Russian actors. Did you have some of the backstory in your mind when you wrote the short story that we now see in the feature? Or was that a process that happened after when you revisited the short? Um, you know, I think the film is very close, very faithful to the story. It just, it, it fleshes out things that weren't in the original or there are scenes that are suggested in the story in passing um, that you see then become dramatic scenes. So for instance, you know, the big confrontation scene when Natasha attacks her mother in the short story, it's, it's literally one line where it says, you know, one day in August, Zena came and accused us, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that now is a eight minute scene, right? Where you get to see it play out. And, but some of the dialogue is verbatim from the story. That was, it was interesting to read it after seeing the film. Um, what did you, well, how did you go about casting the actors that you chose for these roles, and what were you looking for when you were looking for your main characters specifically? Um, so we had a very simple guiding principle is that we would have Russians play Russians. Um, Russian, you know, they're, they're whatever, Soviet people, um, but there would be no fake, you know, Russian actors. And so that was it. We were just looking for people who, who really could play the roles um, authentically. And we cast almost exclusively in Toronto. Uh, the community is now big enough um, that you could do that. Um, some of those actors had experience in the former Soviet Union, some in Israel. Um, the main, the lead, Alex Ozerov, we're just fortunate. He's, he's actually in Toronto. He's the only one in North America that I think could have played that role. He was just right, he was the right age. He spoke Russian. He's a great actor. I think he's a phenomenal actor. Um, yeah. yeah <laughs> and um, Sasha Gordon, who plays Natasha, she's the only one who came not from Canada. She lives in New York. Um, and we found her. It was, very, it was a very hard role to cast because it demands so much. Um, and we, you know, we found her at the last minute and we got lucky. But it was, you know, it was very, 
simple that it had to feel real. And the soundtrack in the short story, I believe, is Led Zeppelin, or there's some reference to Led Zeppelin, and, and yeah, now Bob you have Marley, a... Led Zeppelin, yeah. <laughs> so can you talk about the, you know, the sound design and also the period of time? Right, so this is, as you said before, it's my second feature. Uh, Victoria Day was set in the 1980s, which is kind of a weird quasi-period film, and it was difficult to make and expensive. And when I thought about doing Natasha, I didn't want to do that again because it's difficult. Like, production-wise, it's difficult. And the question was, could it be updated to the present day? And I thought it could. Um, so that was one decision. And then that changes the feel, the musical feel of it, too. So the music you hear is, you know, mostly indie acts, a lot of them Canadian, not exclusively, but the sort of music that a guy like um, Mark, who's now, you know, whatever, 16, would be listening to, to give a sense of his character. Your work has sometimes been compared to Philip Roth. Um, what do you think about that comparison? Um, I don't know. I think it's a shorthand. Um, there, you know, it's it's a it's a nice shorthand. There's there's a lot of Philip Roth that I like. Um, you know, there's a Bay Area artist who, you know, to me meant much more uh, a writer named Leonard Michaels, um, who I think was more of an influence on me. In fact, I know was more of an influence on me. Um, but urban Jewish, you know, kind of immigrant stories. I can see why. Um, and when you were writing, you know, about this very sensitive issue of teenage, teenage sexuality and, you know, the family reactions, um, what were some of your considerations in, in writing that part and also um, directing the female role? Right. Um, you know, as far as the teenage sexuality, the approach was the same as it was everything else. It just had to feel real. You don't show any more than you need. Right, but since sexuality, you know, Natasha's strength, her power over people is sexual, and so you have to show just enough of it to demonstrate what that is and her relation to it, um, how it's, you know, how she gained it, how it's affected her, both good and bad. Um, and you know, we cast an actress in Sasha who was very mature um, in her approach to it. When we shot it, she was the one who really, you know, gave us permission. Um, she was the one who was most comfortable on set, to be honest, um, and we took our lead from her um, and allowed us to do it. I guess the other interesting thing um, that changed from the 1990s to the present day is pornography, access to pornography, right. um, and just the sexualization of young women. Um, and so it's, you know, whereas Natasha in the 90s, that character, I think, felt pretty... Um, extreme, maybe. Um, to me, you know, this is what we see here, sadly, is pretty tame compared to what a lot of teenage, you know, teenager girls, teenagers are doing right now. Um, so that was also, you know, 10 years later, that much of the world had changed, obviously, unexpectedly. Yeah, I think that's such a powerful part of the film, and you you um, walk that balance so well, and it, you know, you have such an uncomfortable feeling watching the film, and yet you have compassion and love for the characters. So um, that that was really amazing. Can you talk a little bit about language in the film? Um, you know, the dialogue in the short story. It's in English, and and just the balance of the child responding in English to the older generation speaking Russian, and then the transition to the two of them communicating with each other. What what was that like for you writing that? I mean, it, in the story, everything's in English, right? And it's it's inferred that they're when you're reading in English, what they're speaking is Russian. But the story only works um, if. Natasha, the character, doesn't speak any English. So she shows up, it's the summer, she speaks no English. Um, the movie wouldn't exist if not for that. So these two people are thrown together. She speaks no English, right? So she's speaking Russian, therefore he's speaking Russian. And therefore everybody's pretty much speaking Russian. Um, and I think as people, not just you know Russian immigrants, but uh, people who are immigrants from other communities know that's typically what happens in a household. The parents will speak in whatever language is the language of the old country. Um, and they're, you know, assimilating children will usually respond back in English. Um, 
So, you know, the, the goal of this thing was to make it feel, make it real, make it authentic. Um, it seems that in the Nietzsche scene, he transitions. He may, there's a, a point where he starts to express himself more in Russian and find himself more in Russian. How did the idea for that scene come about? Um, yeah, I mean, it's his Russian, like my Russian, is imperfect. Um, and so it's this idea of trying to express yourself in a language that you know, you no longer wield properly, uh, which was good with Alex because he came when he was like 12, 13, and so he'd lost a lot of Russian. His accent, if you, you know, if you know Russian, is a little softer than hers. Um, but yes, in that scene, it's the challenge of trying to express something more sophisticated. Like if we were trying to do this in Russian, yeah. uh, this would be very hard for me. <laughs> like, you know. And me. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, so it's, you know, also conveying that, um, how hard it is for him to do anything in a, in, you know, in a sophisticated way. Um, but that's, you know, there's a scene that doesn't exist in the story, um, that now, you know, was, was created for the film. Um, and, you know, interestingly, I think. Well, I want to give our audience a chance to ask questions because I know there, there will be a lot of them. So if we could turn the house lights up a bit and we've got some roving microphones, we'll come and find you. That's great. We can see you a lot better now. And yeah, just raise your hand and we'll, we'll come get you. I have a question over here. Left, right? This way. Ah, gotcha. No, the other way. Yeah, you got me. <laughs> Hi, I also come from a Russian background. Both my parents spoke Russian in the house. I'd be very interested to know more about your background. Um, it's sort of personal, but how much of it came from your background and knowledge and how much of it came from your imagination? It's sort of a hard question, I know. Um, so I was born in Riga, Latvia. Um, we came to Canada in 1980. I was six years old. Um, and so, you know, the context for all of that is the context of, of, of my childhood. Um, growing up in a community like that, in a family like that, and I used as much of it um, as, as seemed fitting. Um, beyond that, what happens, the action of the film is fiction, uh, but the context is supposed to feel real. Um, the way that the people's mentalities, the way that people relate to each other, um, the sort of nuances of that. I mean, they're, they're, you know, one of the things that I've always wanted to do on film was to do a toast. So that character who gives that long toast, right, the grandfather, you know, if you're, if you're of the culture, you realize, you know, how uh, emblematic that is. Um, so things like that, um, you know, you draw from life, but the action, what happens, you know, was there somebody in my life like Natasha, right? That often gets asked, um, right? I have an, another question over here to your right. Hi, I just wanted to compliment you. I thought it was a really excellent film and you obviously have a strong future in filmmaking, but however, since your background is in literature, and you have adapted your films, um, I don't know about your first film, but this one in particular from your, your writing as, as a novelist or a short story writer. Uh, do you see yourself moving more toward film? And I mean, how, do you, how is your process? Do you, would you write in prose first and then adapt it in screenplay format? Or do you see yourself going toward pure screenplay writing? Um, I don't think, you know, I, there's things that literature can do that, that you know, cinema can't, um, language, interiority, um, which I love. So I'll continue to do that. Um, you know, up until very recently, everything I wrote, I wrote not imagining that it would be a film. I thought it was exclusively um, for the page. My last novel, I wrote a novel called The Betrayers, which is the first time that I actually sat and thought, you know, this could be one of three things. It could be a novel, it could be a stage play, or it could be, you know, a screenplay. Um, but I wrote it as a novel because I still think that's the richest form. Uh, you can do the most in a novel in terms of, you know, character. 
Um, but I think that's, that's something that I would like to um, adapt and have adapted out. You know, there's a screenplay of it, um, and so I'm interested in doing that. But um, I, I love the written word, and, and I'll continue to do it as much as I can. This is in the middle, uh, to your left, um, over here. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Um, thank you for the film very much. Uh, both this film and Victoria Day deal with um, the moral development and choices that adolescents make as they kind of figure out what, what's right for themselves and in their family. And so I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about that it's maybe not fair to call it a preoccupation, but your this interest in that moment in kids' lives when they have to figure out what's right, and if there's a if there's a some kind of personal touchstone for you in that adolescent yeah. moment. I mean, I it's some of it is is just happenstance. Um, you know, I wrote Victoria Day at the same time that I was writing the stories that ended up in my first book. And I didn't know, I, I was unpublished and unproduced, so it could have gone either way. Um, and Natasha, I made because of all the stories in that collection, I thought this, this was one that was most cinematic or lent itself um, could, to being dramatized for the screen. Um, I think there is something about you know, that moment in, in adolescent development, exactly as you say, when you're making those first um, serious choices in life. You know, for him, it's his first experience of, of love, his first experience of betrayal, um, the idea of separating yourself from your family, which is really having secrets. Um, you know, so much of the film is Mark knowing things that his parents don't know, serious things. Um, and so that's interesting, and, and trying to figure out, having an, an idea of who you are, but for the first time really having that idea tested. You know, he has some concept of who he believes he is, uh, but Natasha puts him to the test, and you know, if he doesn't pass, um, so that 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 is interesting to me. Um, I don't know if I'll continue doing this sort of thing. In fact, you know, the next film is very different, um, but it's just trying to find uh, dramatic moments in, in somebody's life um, that that seems real and complex. One more question. One more question. One more question over here to. Hello, hi. Uh, great story and a great movie. I, I actually saw you uh, read probably ten or eleven years ago when the collection Natasha came out. I remember you said something interesting, which was uh, when a writer puts the story out in the world. The interpretation of it, at least, really, he gives up some ownership of it and become, belongs to the reader, which I always thought was very interesting. But having said that, um, could you comment on that final uh, shot of Mark looking through his own bedroom window? Well, what do you think it is? We were debating it, and the two interpretations we had were, one is he's on the outside looking in, and the other was that it was him trying to get Natasha's perspective on things. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think generally people, you know, you, like, are pretty close. Yeah, it's, people are not far afield. Um, so, yes, I think it's very, you know, it's consistent with what I intended. Um, it's not like he's looking for fairies or wizards, so that's good. Thank you. Um, we have time for one more question back towards the left. Uh, hello. Um, also really enjoyed the film, um, and uh, obviously it's a film, of a coming of age story, um, but also <laughs> there's so much, uh, you know, that it's about uh, child pornography, child sex. This is sort of this undercurrent that is touched on, and then you feel very uncomfortable, but then their lives kind of continue, but um, I'm curious how much research you did into, you know, uh, that trade in Russia, around the world, um, and how much you wanted the audience to really like feel that um, topic and come away with it, f thinking uh, about you know child sex and um, that sort of thing, and um, what we could learn from that, and if that message is something that you're gonna continue to kind of 
spread as this movie continues to tour? Um, I mean, the short answer is, like, you know, the film is not there uh, to be didactic in any way, but I'm not in favor of, you know, child sex. I mean, I'm not in favor of, like, child prostitution, if that's, if that's what you're talking about. Um, uh, a couple things. One is, I didn't do a ton of research on it. I heard a story. Um, I was living in Los Angeles. I'll do this very quickly. Um, I, was doing, I was living in Los Angeles. I went to film school out there. Um, I had a friend, um, happened to be a guy from Toronto too, who moved to LA and ended up working in porn and directing uh, pornographic films. And I was curious about it. Um, so this is the late 1990s. I was in film school. Um, I borrowed some sound equipment, and I was on—I was the sound man on a film set, for, uh, porn set for three days. Um, and we were shooting one of the days in an office uh, owned by another Russian guy, as the case may be, import-export business. I don't know what he was doing. Um, and he had one of his employees, a guy who only spoke Russian, just there, just overseeing the office. Um, and he only spoke Russian. Um, the director, my friend, spoke Russian, but he was busy directing. Um, I was doing sound, and you don't need to do a lot on a porn set for sound. There's not a ton of dialogue. Um, and so at a certain point, I was just standing around. He was talking to me, and he told me a story um, about a trip he took back to Russia when he saw a friend of his who had been a film director in the Soviet period, um, and then after the collapse of the Soviet Union, started directing uh, pornographic films, many of them with children. And he you know, described this you know, wonderful, idyllic experience that he'd had with his friend, which was shocking to me. Um, and that was really all the research I did for it. I just wondered what it would be like to be one of those kids and one of those girls, and what would happen if that sort of person uh, ended up, you know, in a family like mine in the in the suburbs, um, and what that would do, you know, to a teenager kind of like the way I was, and to a family like not that different from mine. That's really where it came from. It was much more of a character study than anything beyond that. Um, and yeah, it is disturbing. I mean, I was disturbed enough by what he told me um, that got me thinking about it and and creating the story but also trying to think about you know, the power dynamics between you know, a young woman like that and the people around her, um, her mentality, her psychology, um, and seeing what that would do in dramatic terms. Thank you so much. I think